Welcome back to Game Design with Scratch. Today we are going to learn how to create a side-scrolling game. In a side-scrolling game, the character moves from the left side of the screen to the right to meet an objective. In this game, we have a spacecraft, the Millennium Falcon, navigate the mountains on its way to save Princess Leia. Learning how to create a side-scrolling game, or what you will see is actually a moving background, is extremely useful in game design, and I think you're going to love it and immediately think of other games you can create using this concept. So let's get you guys all set up with the starter project and dive right in. Like I said before, in this game we have a spacecraft, the Millennium Falcon, navigate the mountains and the objective of the game is to get to Princess Leia and save her. Our player gets three lives in order to accomplish this task. A life is lost whenever the spacecraft crashes into a mountain. There are four different levels and the game gets increasingly more difficult by making the Millennium Falcon move faster and faster as you progress through the levels. The game is won when the player reaches Princess Leia at the end of the fourth level. You will have a working game by the end of step five, and then in step six, you will have the option to add an introduction to the game. So let's get you guys all set up with the starter project. Below this video, enter your email address, and the download for your starter project should get to you pretty much instantaneously. So I'm going to head over to my inbox, open up my email and click this download button. This will download a starter project with this .sp2 extension, either into your downloads folder or some other folder where you choose to save it. Now let's open up Scratch, click on create to create a new project, and then go to file, upload from your computer, navigate to the place where you save this file, and click open. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the contents of the current project, and yes, we do, so click OK. As always, try not to change the appearances of the sprites and the stage until you have a working game and a full understanding of how the game works. The starter project was specifically designed for this game, and if you change it, your game might not work. So trust me, I know it's really tempting to change what your characters look like, but please hold off until after you finish the game. Okay, let's take a look at what we have to work with. Down here we have three mountain sprites, which we will use to create a moving background. So let's take a quick look at our game again. Although it looks like the Millennium Falcon is moving forward, it really is only moving up and down. The illusion of moving forward is created by moving the background. So let me quickly show you how that's done, and then we will talk about it in further detail in step one. So what we're going to do is place the mountain sprites just to the right of the stage. Now please note, these are no small sprites. Each of these mountain sprites is the size of the entire stage. And they're each going to pass through the stage and at some point take up the entire stage. So as soon as the game starts, we are going to start moving the mountain sprites towards the stage. Let's look at it again, and this time just focus on the stage. This is how you create a moving background. So like I said, we will learn how to tell the computer to create this moving background in step one, but for now just know that the mountain sprites are here for that reason, to help us create a moving background. Okay, let's take a look at our Millennium Falcon sprite. This is where we're going to put most of our code, if you go to scripts, you will find these two touching color blocks. This first block is going to help us tell the computer when our player has finished a level. So this black color over here is the exact shade of black as this line at the edge of the Mountain 3 sprite. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tell the computer when the Millennium Falcon touches this exact shade of black, that means that we have reached this location which is at the end of the mountain line, and therefore we should be promoted to the next level. This peach color over here is the exact shade of peach as the edge of the mountains. So we're going to use it in our code to say when the Millennium Falcon touches this color, that means that it's crashed into a mountain, 
and the player should therefore lose a life. So I put these two colors already in there to make it easier for you guys. So try not to click inside these squares because that will cause the colors to change and then the computer won't know which colors to use. But if by accident you happen to change these colors, I will show you in step three how to change them back. I hid the colors in one of the backdrops for the stage, so you will be able to grab them from there if needed, but for now let's just grab these blocks and drag them to the corner so they don't bother us. I'm going to grab the blocks on the actual block and not on the colors, because remember we don't want to mess up those colors. Okay, let's take a quick look at our stage and then we'll come back to the Millennium Falcon sprite and look at its costumes. Our stage came with two backdrops. This first backdrop is the background for the game and the second one, like I said, I just put in there in case you guys need to get those colors back. Okay, back to the Millennium Falcon sprite. It came with seven costumes, one for moving up, one for moving down, one for the explosion that occurs when the spacecraft crashes into a mountain, one with Han Solo informing us that the game has been won, one with Han Solo informing us that the level has been passed, one for when the game is over, and finally one with Princess Leia. So the Millennium Falcon is going to change costumes based on what's going on in the game. If it's moving up, it should look like it's moving up. If it's moving down, it should look like it's moving down. When it crashes into a mountain, we should see an explosion. When we pass a level, we should see Han Solo informing us that we have passed on to the next level, and so forth. Finally, we have these two sprites, which we will use in step six to build the introduction. The opening sprite has four different costumes, and we will use them all one by one to create the introduction. Now, watching the introduction might be fun the first few times you play the game, but after a few times, it can get annoying. So I added this button sprite down here, and in step six, I will show you how to program it so the player can skip the introduction if he or she so wishes. And I think we're ready to start building this game. So let's head over to step one and dive right into building a scrolling backdrop. 